Okay, well, we have nobody running off, hiding their face uh, now that they know it's recorded. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So uh, good morning, everyone. Hopefully everyone is uh, not going stir crazy, cabin fever, you know, uh, grabbing your kids or your spouse by the neck in the, at the end of the day or whatever it is uh, as we get through all of this. Uh, so today I'm going to share my screen in a second. Uh, but, you know, and the topic, as you know, is selling uh, in an economic uh, downturn. I think, though, I'll make a couple comments. I think um, what's happened, uh, I think we've gotten to the point where, you know, the initial shock for some uh, may be over and some people have figured out, you know, okay, I have to, I have to do something. And as I get into uh, the topic today, it's about, you know, how, how structured you are, how organized you are in, in what you do, and what's the best uh, approach to take, you know, as we, I, you know, we're, I think we're still smack dab in the middle of this thing. I mean, I know people are protesting to open up and all that sort of thing, but even when it opens up, there's still going to be a fair amount of, um, uh, of individuals, you know, kind of squeamish to, to get back to normal. So, you know, it, it really is about, how do I want to, I like to think of it like this. How do I want to operate? How do I need to operate in the next 90 days, at least? And you'll see a point that I have in the presentation that, that speaks to that. But how do I need to act and react for my business, to keep my business going, to find opportunity uh, to, to, to bob and weave, if you will, uh, in the next 90 days to, um, uh, to set myself up uh, for the coming um, the coming period after that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And well, I want to get rid of this. There we go. And for whatever reason, okay. All right. Let me get that out of the way. Okay. Everybody just sees the presentation now, right? Yep. Okay. I got some funny things going on with the windows. Mm -hmm. So, um, Getting right into it, um, you know, selling in an economic downturn. And I'll say right now, look, this isn't going to be a, a rocket science. There's not magic dust involved here. If there was, I'd be out front selling it uh, to a line of cars and, and people coming by. But, you know, hopefully my goal, all, as always, when I do any kind of webinar or training or coaching consulting is that everybody be able to take at least one thing away uh, I like to say that makes tomorrow different than yesterday. If it ends up being four or five things, fantastic. So uh, all I ask is that you be on the lookout for what is that that one or those one or two things that you really uh, want to uh, take away, take the concept, take the idea, take the, the approach, the tactic, and be disciplined and dedicated to put it into place. So let me give you a quick background on uh, Sandler. Uh, just so everybody knows, I think people are different, have different levels of, of knowledge about that. Uh, Sandler, we're, we'll call it business growth advisors. Uh, you know, it used to be Sandler Sales Institute, uh, now Sandler Training, most people just say Sandler. Um, but, you know, I've settled on business growth advisors because, you know, with the audience that we, different audiences that we have, we do different things. But it all uh, boils down to uh, how can, um, we engage to help grow your business, not just sustain it, not tread water, maybe to save it, but to really help either an individual um, salesperson uh, reach their maximum maximum capacity in a territory, or you know, quite frankly, a Fortune 100 uh, company or a small business actually get as far as they need to get, and that's through. Uh, leadership co co consulting, whether it be with CEOs or owners or whatever it is, and where it comes to strategy uh, or the structure hiring, yeah, we do hiring assessments. You see that last bullet point. Uh, we do uh, we, we deal with management as far as manager training, uh, how to uh, successfully motivate uh, their team, coach, uh, and and develop. Every, every direct report that a manager might have. We're most known for sales training, whether it be one individual or a sales team, giving them a, a structured selling process, um, tactics, uh, approaches, a methodology to be consistent. 
uh, we have probably one of the, the largest online learning uh, databases as far as reinforced learning, a lot of videos, audios, podcasts. A lot of it is free, by the way. And if anybody wants to, uh, after this, uh, contact me to see, hey, how do I get the uh, access to the free uh, resources, please let me know and I'll get that information to you. And then we do, uh, I do speaking and we do also development uh, and uh, uh, development assessments, hiring assessments and things like that. So that's a quick and dirty on San Luis. So let's get right into it. You know, we have to face the brutal facts uh, of what's going on. I think by now, as I mentioned, everybody's faced it. Everybody's out of denial. Um, hopefully they're not out of business. And I know it's a struggle right now for a lot of people. We do have to face the beautiful, brutal facts that, you know, life isn't going to isn't going to turn around on a dime. So therefore, we have to be optimistic and, and, and stay positive about what can happen or what needs to happen. And in, in, in thinking that, I, thought, I think it's important to talk about this thing we call the belief wheel. Because ultimately, you know, your beliefs about what can happen, what, what, what should happen, uh, really are going to drive your actions in this particular time period, in any economic downturn. Um, and and we, we talk about the belief wheel because, as you can see, the beliefs you hold really form the judgments or feelings you have about a, a, a certain matter. And then so once you have those feelings, those judgments, those direct the actions or, or really the inaction in some cases, if it's a negative uh, time type of feeling that you take, those action creates results, and then those results actually reinforce the, the belief. Now, give, let me give you a perfect example in this particular situation. Uh, there's somebody out there, maybe many, hopefully none of you, that believe that, you know, no one wants to hear from me now. You know, let's say you're in, a, in some sort of prospecting mode and, you know, all your business doesn't come to you. Um, and you're thinking, hold on a second, there's no way I can approach anybody asking them to pay me money. Are you kidding me? Everybody's trying to, they're hoping for the second stimulus check and that sort of thing. So if I have that belief, no one wants to hear from me. Now my, my feeling is, I don't, I don't think I should call them. I, I, I shouldn't call them, period. Uh, I, I'm not going to be looking like, you know, the insensitive individual who doesn't recognize, um, you know, somebody uh, in need and still trying to push their product. Um, so therefore, what action or inaction, you don't call them. Or if you do, you don't really have the conviction that, that you should have in doing what you normally do. And as a result, you don't find any viable clients or, or customers or, or whatever it is. And that just kind of reinforces the whole thing. So we, it needs to start there that the belief is, you know what, someone out there still wants to hear from me and, and maybe more importantly needs to hear from me. Because then that cascades, you know, that cascade from that really does uh, uh, change your action. So, you know, take a moment, you know, after this webinar and, and really identify what are the current beliefs that you have at this point in time that maybe, we'll call it a self-limiting belief, that may be um, starting that negative self-fulfilling prophecy versus a positive one. Uh, so I always like to make that point because some people might have a genius attack right there. Now, it's been a short time. There's been a lot of big changes in, in a short time. Obviously, non-essential purchases postponed. And, you know, here's that whole notion. Well, somebody might think, well, I'm not really essential. I, they probably don't think I'm essential or, or whatever it is. So I don't, I don't really want to try and put, uh, uh, um, push this square peg into a round hole. I'm in one of those businesses, those industries, where, you know, when companies have to cut uh, their budget, you know, training, consulting, whatever is, is one of the first things to go. And arguably, you know, some will say, hey, look, that's just kind of a superfluous type of investment where others will say, oh, no, we can't cut that because we need our people to be more uh, um, effective than ever. Once again, the different beliefs that leads to different action. And so you still have to see yourself and what you do as essential. Uh, Obviously, we have a lot of layoff closures, working from home. You see some of the other stuff. And that last bullet point, you know, priorities really have changed. There have been changes. However, um, some things haven't changed. You know, you still need to make money. You still need to stay in business. You know, if you're in business to business, your, your prospects still need to 
to make money or save money or be more productive or, um, or, or be more efficient. How whatever value you bring to them, you know, they still have a need for that value. And you have to believe that you, you offer that real value and that you create, you know, a measurable return on the investment that they make in you. You know, so, you know, the, 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 then the main thing that have, hasn't changed is your expertise um, is one of the things that can help them do whatever it is, run their business better, meet their goals, help their clients, whatever it is. Those things haven't changed. So therefore, we need to act like that and be laser focused on some things. We really have to kind of go down, and I don't like using the whole value uh, proposition, I think it's thrown around way too much in, in business and in sales, but hey, I'll use it today. Um, but you know, what do we do better than anyone? Uh, you know, I think one of the things that, that happens or that has happened in this time period is that um, it, it's, a, it's a reset. It's, it's a time for somebody to sit back and reflect and pause. Were they coasting? Uh, were they really, do they now have to dig down deep and, and figure out uh, exactly what is their, their value? Uh, what is their business's value? What is their secret sauce? Did they do a good job of communicating it or was it just kind of there? Um, and, and more specifically, you know, the clients I did have that did engage with me, you know, why did they buy from me? One of the things I always teach clients, you know, people were always uh, curious as to why they lose business. You know, they'll have exit interviews and, 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 and this and that and the other, but rarely do they ask a client, you know, why did you choose me? You know, why do you come here? Why do you continue to come here? And so this may be a time for you to actually reflect on uh, what, what that is, because you're likely going to need to use that because it probably plays into your unique selling uh, proposition. And now is really the time to focus on who is your ideal client profile. There's a lot of people maybe you have as clientele, but you know, who ideally uh, is uh, that client that you want to focus on because ultimately this last point here is important. Um, your focus, I believe, needs to be on how can you, in however, whatever it means to you, how can you help prospects make money or save money? And that may seem simplistic, but that's probably where people's minds are, whether a business, an individual, in the next 90 days. You know, adopt that paradigm, kind of do a brainstorming session sometime today or tomorrow and, and just see what happens, see what comes out of it. Uh, and I think you'd be surprised. You may have a genius attack or two. So let's get down to the nitty gritty of, of how uh, we at Sandler think uh, you should look at this. We have this, uh, this, this classification, if, we will, if you will, of clients. So it's called our care model. And when you look at your, um, your client database, your customer database, you really want to kind of stratify them out, if you will, into these four areas. You know, there are clients that, you know, you want to, you want to keep. You have current clients, you want to keep them. We're going to delve into what, what this means in this particular environment uh, for each of these. Of course, you, want, you need to attain new accounts. Um, maybe you, you need to recapture some former clients, some former accounts or customers. And, and then finally, um, you know, you, you want to possibly expand revenue with existing accounts. That's overall, whether you're in this, this, this crisis environment or not, you know, we really encourage our clients to take the care model approach to how they run their businesses. Um, and, and specifically to give you an example, uh, let's say you have a business that, you know, they have uh, clients that fit in each one of these these buckets, you have to look and say, well, what percentage of my time and activity am I putting into the clients that I want to keep? Maybe I'm not trying to expand. Maybe I can't expand. They're a good cash cow. I need to keep them happy because as they say, somebody's best client uh, is somebody else's best prospect. So what am I doing to keep those clients? Well, what percentage of my behavior should be there? What am I doing and what percentage of my behavior should be in attaining new clients and so on with the other categories? Uh, so keep that in mind and let's delve into what it means as far as this particular situation. Job number one, I think, um, during, during a, a, an economic downturn is to keep as many existing clients as you can. I mean, 
people have probably on on some level lost clientele. I certainly have lost clientele, have things put on pause. Uh, and sometimes when those things pause, they, they don't restart. So your key is to what can you do to keep uh, those clients? One of the things we mentioned, you guys, you probably have done it, but if not, you certainly want to add it to your daily regimen are checkup calls. Uh, and, and those checkup calls are not calling to see, hey, you know, are we still in business? You know, or, or, are we still doing our thing but it's really to show that you matter or, or that they matter to you beyond their wallet check to see you know how are they doing in all this my father used to say people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and um, that 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 we have a, a guaranteed and easy opening of the conversation how is it affecting their business what are they concerned about and, and the reason i say this is because i guarantee you there are some people out there who maybe have a current client, maybe they're on some sort of uh, monthly uh, payment schedule, they're doing this and that and the other, and they say, hey, look, no news is good news. I'm not calling them. If I call them, that's gonna be the opening for them to say, hey, yeah, I was, I was actually meaning to call you. I think we're gonna need to kind of hold off on whatever we do. And so you have to fight that fear and you have to believe that I need to show that I am, am more concerned about the welfare of their business there, uh, that individual than I am about our financial uh, relationship and that sort of thing. Uh, you'd be surprised what comes out of those calls and I'd be curious to hear maybe at the end of uh, the session, if, if people have been, um, uh, the kind of conversations that have been happening if people have been doing that. Um, during those calls, and this is one of the important reasons to do it, you may be able to help them find opportunities in the midst of um, in the midst of turmoil in our our um, our public training class our sales mastery class um, had on Monday we had a session where we really talked about what are the new uh, we'll call them pains the new pains the new issues challenges that uh, have kind of come up in your prospects your customers world uh, now that weren't there but also what are the new opportunities that maybe they see, maybe they don't see that are, are present and how do they, you know, take advantage of, of that. Um, you know, on the, the, I don't know who saw the Rent and Live program uh, last night. I thought it, was, thought it was fantastic. It was just, just kooky and fun. But uh, when the Rain City Catering was on and, and Chef Jeremy was going through the chicken parmesan uh, recipe, you know, he mentioned uh, how one of the things that they've done, they've kind of pivoted, I think, because I don't know if they did this before or not, um, that they have, uh, what did he, I think it was, um, maybe it was beef stroganoff. It was something, oh, no, fettuccine Alfredo or something. Basically, that was all you had to do. You could come and buy it, take it home, put it in the microwave, put it in boiling water, and bam, there's, there's dinner, you know. I don't know if they were, like I say, doing that before, but there's an opportunity there that I gotta wonder if it may still uh, exist um, after this is all over. There's, there's a certain uh, avenue maybe that they found that um, will add to the offerings that they, can, um, that they can do. Who knows? I think something's gonna come out of that. So what kind of, how are you helping your current clients find opportunities that may uh, be quite frankly hiding in plain sight for them? Um, but overall, you have to determine how do you remain essential? You have to determine, you have to look at your, how you engage your offerings. And even if it's the smallest thing, how can you remain in their eyes essential and, and really focus on that value? If somebody's on some kind of monthly payments and you know, people tend to think all or nothing, um, you may want to think, well, what if we uh, go to some kind of gradient type payment uh, arrangement where let's just say they're paying you, you know, let's say a thousand bucks a month. And, just, and I realize once again, there are maybe some business to consumer um, type of uh, industries out there. So you have to play with this maybe a little bit, but you know, uh, let's say it's a thousand bucks a month. Okay, well, instead of just severing ties how about if we lower this payment over the next three, four, five, six months and gradually increase it as things come back to normal? I mean, what are you doing to help them help you, I guess is the question. And people might not, might not like the last bullet point, but 
at some point you have to let them know you know if there is some ongoing engagement it's okay to cancel you know people probably feel bad uh, don't want to have to do it uh, but i think that that um, you know can 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 pay you back in spades later on uh, when uh, when things get back to even close to normal and you see that other with each of these categories uh, i encourage you to think you know what are other actions that i should be doing if i simply encapsulate these certain clients what are other actions i should be doing that can really help me keep this client and not have to hope they come back when uh, when it's all said and done so attain new clients um, the first thing kind of goes back to that first point you have to control your negative beliefs and 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 still believe that there's still business out there uh, that that can be gotten and you have to take that approach you have to have a focused plan what we call we, we we call it your your prospecting or your behavioral cookbook you know it focus your plan on the activities that you need to be doing daily that involve um, attaining new clients prospecting uh, for new clients you know maybe you ask for certain referrals on LinkedIn five a day you make five cold calls you um, make 10 posts on Facebook or LinkedIn, whatever it is that you know helps to bring uh, people to you, helps to generate conversations, uh, you need to have a plan uh, for that and stick to it because uh, what can happen is, especially something weird is happening in this time period with the stay at home action, um, days just kind of run into each other and I think you lose focus. Some people lose focus a lot easier. So when you don't have a plan, it's a lot easier to lose focus. Uh, so I uh, have a plan, make a plan to stick to. Um, now we talk about uh, we talked about check checkup calls with with clients, current clients, but maybe they're touch calls you make to prospects, and these are really most likely past prospects. Maybe they didn't. Uh, they were kind of in the hopper. They didn't quite move. Maybe uh, you recently, you just didn't do business with them uh, at all. Hey, you know what? You still may want to have the, the, the touch call be there to, um, to see how they're doing. It's kind of the same thing. It's, it's a relational call. It's to, to care or to show that you care about their overall situation. And maybe something's changed. Maybe a new pain has uh, come into your world. And let me give you a little tip on how it might occur. You, you would want to use what we call a third party story. Say you're calling a past prospect, they didn't do business for some reason. Hey, you call to see how they were doing, um, you know, how, how they were faring in all this. And then as, as you're talking, you know, you may say, you know, I was talking to, I was having a conversation like this with another person kind of in their space. Base, uh, like like them in their their same industry. I was talking to another uh, account uh, such as yours, and they had they told me that one of their main concerns now was this, or they saw that there was they recognized an opportunity, um, uh, this particular opportunity in this environment. I'm wondering, are, are you seeing that, or have you thought about that as well? You may find yourself in a whole new conversation. Um, hopefully that has something to do with what you do, but uh, even if you just help them think about things and figure something out, your, uh, I think karma's gonna come back and, and uh, pay you well for that. Um, the other thing with these prospects you talk about, talk to, whether it's a touch call or I mean, let's say it's a brand new um, piece of business, maybe you're planting the seed for the recovery. And then if, if so, um, you need to do a, a couple of things. You need to actually go down to that um, uh, to that um, next bullet point test to see whether there's any kind of current um, issue, but more so from the future, or when you look into the future, you know, help them identify what opportunities may, uh, may arise when on the back end of this whole thing. In that same session I mentioned on Monday, we actually kind of talked through and, and everybody came up with something that they just hadn't taken the time to think about uh, that, you know, they can have the conversation now, 
uh, doesn't mean there's going to be action now, not, not an engagement, but it sets the stage for the future. And they look even that much more valuable in that they help the prospect actually come up with something and uh, once again, pl plants the seed. You also want to uh, kind of identify what kind of impact um, that, that, that either getting rid of a current challenge is going to have for them or taking advantage of a future opportunity is going to uh, happen. But overall, this is probably, it could be the, the most challenging um, uh, of the four, the most challenging four individuals. Uh, so it, it requires that you have some, some forethought as to uh, what potential opportunities you know, could they have. Uh, you may have to change your approach a little bit. You may have to kind of step back, put yourself in their shoes because you know, people in business and sales, they tend to just kind of figure out how can I, how can I get to the end quickly uh, and, and not necessarily put themselves in their prospect shoes and actually think, well, you know, what do they really care about? What's their main concern? You know, what are they not seeing that I can help them see? So keep those aspects in mind. And once again, if you can think of anything else, jot it down as soon as the thought comes to you. Now, uh, something that a lot of people don't necessarily do a lot are what I call resurrection calls. And that's really to recapture a former customers. They did business with you before, for whatever reason they stopped. You know, does it make sense to do it again? So that first bullet point I think is important. You wanna sit down, you wanna identify every account, uh, every individual, whatever it is that's ever spent money with you um, and reach out to them with a touch call. How, how are they doing? Uh, what's going on? See if their, their situation has changed. See if something has come up that uh, may be able to justify a conversation about re-engaging. Um, now, the key here is I think you want to make sure you have some specific questions uh, that you want to ask them regarding these two points. You know, what new challenges has the current environment brought? Um, and uh, like we've talked before, what, what opportunities have been created? It may, be in a, it may have been a while since you've spoken with them, uh, but at least you have that relationship uh, that past relationship that's already been established. So I, I think these conversations, I just had one the other day that unearthed an opportunity to, to re-engage. And I honestly just thought it was, you know, I made the call because you have to do the behaviors whether you feel like it or not. Um, but it, it, I wasn't expecting it. And uh, a good conversation came out of it and a potential good opportunity. Uh, so give some forethought to that. And uh, maybe you want to attempt, maybe you have a new idea, maybe something you've heard before. Uh, attempt to offer um, something that you do now to something that you uncover, whatever it is. Um, now, this next one, I, I, I got to believe people don't necessarily do, do this a lot. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, uh, what is it? Um, I forgot the philosopher's name. Uh, it'll come to me. But basically the whole gist is give more to get more. And so during this call, you know, you understand what's going on with them. Um, search your memory banks or, or whatever it is, your database. Can you offer a referral to him or him or her? Can you offer uh, an introduction that may help them? Remember that uh, point we talked about earlier. In the next 90 days, how can you help somebody make money or, or save money? And making an introduction that that works out, it may that may be the case. And what you do, you you also kind of jumpstart the the principle of reciprocity, uh, because they may have something for you. Uh, you know, create some indebtedness or whatever it is. But it certainly doesn't ask uh, doesn't hurt for you to ask for uh, any kind of referral or introduction uh, that they might. Uh, have of uh, somebody that you'd like to, uh, or it makes sense for you to have a conversation with that you can help out in whatever capacity uh, that you normally do. Uh, but overall, you know, look in this world, as they're saying, we're all we're all in it together. And so maybe you can offer to help, even if uh, even if they don't pay you for it. Something that you do now, don't give away all your services for free. I mean, after a while, you run run you out of business. But um, 
Let, let's see what is there that you can do to help that maybe they don't need to pay for this particular thing. You know, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. You, you, you can't necessarily um, just, you know, be, be uh, gimme, gimme, gimme without uh, offering to, uh, to give a bit to kind of balance things out. So think of those things and see if you can get some of those people back on board. And then finally, expand with current accounts. There's the whole upsell and cross sell, you know, no, no new information there, but maybe you can identify, you know, where uh, they can consolidate uh, activity that they're doing with multiple vendors, maybe do it with you, who knows? Maybe you can create a bundled service. Uh, maybe they're using one of the, one of your, your capabilities, your services, you know, is there some way that, you know, you can find a need and then uh, bundle something together. Once again, help them save money, help you continue to make a little money. Uh, I don't necessarily encourage to do a lot of major discounting and that sort of thing, but maybe it does make sense in some case, uh, in some cases in this case to uh, create some kind of volume pricing discount uh, that's, you know, related to the current situation. But overall, um, creativity may be uh, a key thing in, in in helping to find additional opportunity with those folks that maybe they have no danger of leaving. Like, don't get this confused with the keep accounts. Um, you, you they're they're there, but you know what other opportunities can you find to deepen your relationship? And that's also where the belief comes in that could stop somebody by saying, "Hey, look." Uh, we're, we're doing this, I'm not gonna dare come in and, and ask for more business here because I'm just glad they're staying with me. You gotta fight that, it's gotta make sense you know, for everybody uh, all the way around. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention, well, no, I'll mention it in the next slide. You know, overall, you have to fo focus on the right activities. Uh, this may be a time where you need to step up um, how actively you're asking for referrals or introductions. How, how are you are you even close to maximizing the connections you have on a LinkedIn? You gotta believe that you know, everybody, a lot of people are suffering, but I, quite frankly, I have some clients who are going gangbusters basically due to their particular industry. Um, but some are just, you know, they, they're figuring it out. And uh, it, it's certainly okay to, uh, to, 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 give people the opportunity to help you it is really what it boils down to whether somebody's doing well or not uh, to ask for introductions right now could be arguably one of the best times because everybody wants to pull together even if they can't do anything uh, with you or for you maybe they know somebody the, st the strategic alliances uh, bullet point I think may be one of the most important uh, points on this particular slide, let me tell you why. If you, if you don't have a, uh, a strong uh, strategic alliance uh, with maybe someone who, who has your similar customer base, maybe they're not a competitor, maybe they're the, 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 the uh, services, maybe they're complementary, maybe they aren't, but they call on the same people. Um, this might be the time to form uh, some alliances. You can do a lot with that. You can do joint calls. You can do joint presentations. You can um, maybe tie uh, how one, the benefit of one can help with the benefit of others. You know, two heads are better than one, quite frankly. Hey, you know what, in this, uh, in this day, and, day and time, just having somebody to uh, keep your mind right and, and, and form a plan with uh, so you're not in it all alone, if you will, uh, can be beneficial. So think about, you know, if you don't have an alliance, hey, who could you form uh, one with? And then what can you do uh, to collectively uh, move forward and really address any of those four different areas? We talked about LinkedIn and Facebook and, and, and of course, everybody's using Zoom meetings. But ultimately, you want to really gear your mind towards helping and, and not selling. You know, and maybe that seems simplistic, uh, but when people are in the mindset of selling, 
they 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 start to uh, they're just trying to figure out how do I get to the end? How do I get this deal by hook or by crook? Um, and it, it comes across, you know, it, it for whatever reason, it, it's not in this day and age, certainly not uh, going to be uh, as appreciated as somebody coming to see how can I how can I better your situation? How can I help you? Whether I end up whether it ends up helping me tremendously or a little bit or not at all. So I don't think that. Uh, point can be uh, stressed um, greater. Uh, a few Sandler rules to keep in mind. You know, in this whole thing, you gotta you gotta think you're independently wealthy. You don't need the business. And I know a lot of you do. I certainly do. But uh, you still have to go work, make a plan, work a plan. But you have to think. Look, I can't get desperate. I don't need the business. This is I'm, I'm out here to find the people who actually need me. When I talk to some of my clients, I just say I'm looking for the people who have a hole in their boat. You know, if they have a hole in their boat, if I find those people, then we can. It just makes sense to work together. I'm looking for uh, if I have a client and I'm looking to see, hey, do they have any additional holes, any additional leaks that have. Uh, that have come up or are they floating along just fine and how can I make this journey um, even more comfortable even better you have to remain unattached to the outcome guess what some people just they, they just you, you can't uh, there's a saying S, SW4 some will some won't so what someone's waiting and you know you got you have to believe that and stay unattached from the outcome that's going to help you maintain equal business stature when you operate as if you have 20 million in the bank. Now, I know if each of you had 20 million in the bank, you certainly wouldn't be on this webinar. But uh, and if you do, then, hey, we need to be greater friends. Um, but um, but that's the way you want to think about this sort of thing. And um, and finally, you know, just just think about as some of the things we've said. It's OK, you know. For the clients to cancel, you, you have to you have to believe that and you don't want it to happen, but you you want to show them why they might want to think twice about canceling if it is some sort of current client. You have to guard your attitude. You have to make sure that you aren't um, uh, drifting away into the "woe is me, uh, what am I going to do" type of um, a type of mentality. And I, some people are doing this. I've I've heard different stories. Um, but if you're not using, if you find yourself with this extra time, you know, during the stay at home, what are you doing for self-development? Uh, you know, you want to stay sharp. This may be the time. I tell a lot of my clients, hey, this may be the time to practice some of your, uh, some of your talk tracks, if you will, to, uh, to get, get, uh, get some flashcards with the kids and, and practice some of those hard responses that, you know, you look like a deer in headlights when, the, when, when the, a prospect asks you a question or whatever it is. How are you actually trying to get better during this time so that you're, at, you're as effective as you can be, you know, for those opportunities you do have and even more effective on uh, the back end. And of course, if you lay a foundation for that strong recovery, then that, that's all the better. So, you know, the final thing, you really just have to stay focused on only those things you can control. And that can be emphasized enough. Stay focused on only those things that you can control. If it's out of your control, if it doesn't pass the litmus test, you gotta leave it alone. But don't dismiss it too quickly. You know, give it some thought to make sure there's nothing you can do that can bring a little bit of it into your control. But overall, just leave it at that. Uh, I'll say one more um, thing, because they say you're not supposed to do any webinars without giving somebody an opportunity to do something. Uh, this may or may not apply to anybody on the call uh, right now. We're recording it. Maybe somebody will see it. But um, a complimentary, complimentary invitation to uh, an executive brief in a session we're going to have on Zoom um, on June 5th. And this is for somebody who maybe owns a business, um, uh, runs businesses, uh, is the president, CEO, or whatever it is. Um, and if any of these bullet points make sense, we're going to be talking about creating organizational excellence, uh, about a 90-minute session. And 
you know, the hope is that people will come out with some clear ideas of what they need to do um, to, to even come out better on the back end. It's not for people who are looking to just um, uh, tread water, just weather the storm, but who are really looking to put some things in place, take it as an opportunity, as a reset opportunity uh, to make some things happen and want to hear about some ways uh, to do so. And so with that, uh, these are the ways that you can get in touch with me. Um, feel free to take a screenshot or, or yeah. just call, call the chamber. They can get in touch with me. Uh, and, um, and there you go. I will open it up for questions and we'll go from there. Everybody's muted, but feel free to unmute. If you have a question or two. Oh, there's a chat. Oh, Diane has a call from, oh, Dave Up the Grove. I have a question. Yes. Hey, my name's Cece. Hi, Cece. And I just joined the chamber. And um, I unfortunately had a doctor's appointment um, at the time of your talk. I um, just got on like about I don't know two minutes ago yeah I mean, you were so, at the beginning and then you went and they called you in and they came out oh we so, just been, we just been talking about you know uh, the weather and Trump and it. I figured I figured as much I was like could you just repeat all of this or whatever <laughs> no, I'm teasing I'm teasing <laughs> um is this going to can this was recorded so I can yes Yes. But, What's your business, Cece? I, um, I'm a water specialist. I have, um, let's see, what's the best way for me to put it? I enjoy educating people mm -hmm. about what's going on with the water on within our planet mm -hmm. and that there is an alternative, a healthy alternative to drinking bottled water. And so what I do is I educate people about a, tech, a water technology that they can have, a water technology system mm -hmm. that they can have in their home that will produce seven different types of waters that they will be able to utilize in their life as drinking water, water to wash their fruits and vegetables, uh, sanitation water, and there's a variety of other waters the technology is sound it's from a company that's uh, based in japan it's 40 over 45 years solid of technology mm -hmm. it's a quality that is unlike any other it surpasses all the other water ionizers on the market it has all the isos and the uh, gold seal water certification okay. it's used in medical and so it's the best okay. and i am very driven on having people know that what's happening in this in our world with uh, these huge bottled water companies siphoning our beautiful groundwater, and that we can there's an alternative, and they okay. don't need to go that route. All right. Well, check out well, well you know check out the recording, and um, my mind's thinking like, hmm, how does this apply to CC? Check out the recording, and, and feel free to contact me with any any kind of questions that you know relevant. In, in that area because I mean obviously there, you have a message you're trying to get out um, to to individuals that, uh, that you know that 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 may find that will find that a value and, and things like that so and then quite frankly in this day in this time there may be some other things that they're thinking about more than you know than, than that so you have to fit you have to become essential which I talked about in the uh, thing how do you how do you become essential so how do you make that conversation essential right now? So check out the recording and uh, feel free to contact me. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, anybody else? No other questions. Yeah, thank you. I, I get the information to see it in a different okay. format that I'm used okay. to seeing. It. All right. Appreciate it. Fair enough. 
All right. Well, I mean, I know you're supposed to sit and kind of wait for questions and that sort of thing, but everybody's muted now. I don't know if you can unmute. Oh, there you are, Diane. Hopefully the call went well. Yeah, um, no, I am. Um, thanks for your, your patience. I it had a, a call regarding something that's happening in the city. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it, it took my pri priority right there for that, um, for the end. Your, okay. your presentation was fantastic. And it, it is something that I needed right now with, with our approach. And so I appreciate your, your perspective and, and some of those reminders and some of the things that I, I hadn't thought of before. Um, mm -hmm. The one thing that we're finding with the chamber is that touching just a touch point with the clients is so important because you're at a 50,000 foot level where your client is in the, the emotional on the ground and mm -hmm. sometimes they can't step back to see it and you can mm -hmm. provide that outside approach. So thank you for, for covering that. And like I mentioned earlier, one of the things that you know, some of my clients have um, I've gone over that with, they, they've looked and they've realized that they need to change the percentages of, uh, of the time that they spend in the different quadrants um, and really be more uh, purposeful about saying, you know what, only 10% only of our time necessarily needs to be going towards attaining new business i have to put we have to ramp it up to 40 percent on the things that we need to do to keep current clients or uh 30 percent on expanding stuff or we need to definitely step up trying to reach back and grab uh some of that some of that business that we had everything was great but it's gone for some reason and so you know it's really about the analysis it's about breaking it out and using it using it in the best way uh, possible for your uh, particular uh, business or approach. And, uh, you know, I don't care if it's business to business or even business to consumer, there, there's something in there if you think about it from a strategic standpoint and, and then apply it appropriately uh, to, uh, to keep you moving forward. Anybody else? Either I was incredibly thorough or absolutely worthless. One of the two. Whenever there's no questions, I always always think of one of one of the two. I you know. I thorough, hate. thorough, thorough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, hey, you know, um, coming up on the top of the hour, um, Diane, you you say you'll make the recording. Um, available on the what the chamber website or something like that yep what we'll do is we'll put it out on the chamber website and we'll also send it out in an e-blast for a recap we have that ability to do that now we're learning all sorts of things with with zoom and new features and just like you talked about rain city how they have embraced something new that may be great moving forward this mm -hmm. is a hard reset and in in a lot of ways there's a lot of positive things that are going to come out of it mm -hmm. hey james yes i do have one Question, do you have a planning form that'd be helpful for businesses that kind of lays out these four, those four elements? Oh, um, you know, let me look in, uh, I might have uh, something, whether it's already kind of a, a, a uh, pre-printed, pre pre-thing. I, I might have something, but if not, I can, I can easily, you know, make something uh, simple enough. Uh, to to do that, I don't recall necessarily seeing that. That comes from our uh, our enterprise selling program originally. That whole concept, but it's able to be utilized everywhere. So let me look to see if there's a specific tool, if you will, which that would be the form uh, that uh, that I can send to you. And but you uh, showed us one of those infograms that towards the end that kind of summarized some of your key takeaways. Uh huh. I thought you you showed that in your presentation. Um, no, I think I think uh, Dan's talking about kind of um, you know with those four categories. I don't I don't think I had a slide that actually has you know what you need to do here or the the planning form. I, I maybe had a little summary of things. Okay, kind of like a planning template. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so I, I was talking to a business person that says you know I don't know really what I should be doing right now. It'd be nice to have a little template to say. You know, if you sit down and kind of think through these things mm -hmm. and write like, here's my top priority, here's my key performance indicator for my company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What they, well, they fill it in. I mean, we don't have any kind of pre, yeah. you know, with all the <laughs> the right. uh, the suggestions because certainly everybody's different. But Correct. 
but yeah, I, I do believe now that you say it like that, that there is something. I'll, I'll look and get something to you. Okay. Uh, Thanks. And go from there. Good question. Anybody else? Well, I guess not. Well, I appreciate. Oh, that was something else. Well, I appreciate the time uh, to uh, to come and talk to everybody. Hopefully, there'll be more that uh, watch the recording and and once again, just uh, one or two takeaways that uh, they can help put into play sooner than later. And uh, you know, as always, wash your hands, stay safe. If anybody has any questions, feel free to uh, to email me or give me a call. Thank you, James. Hopefully Thanks, you got James. a good bill of health uh, there, Cece. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. See everyone later. Thanks so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.